ADAC fellows are part of the center. They're our student part of the center. They contribute to our, our research projects. And here at the Week of the Arctic, they're helping us to run the Arctic 2030 workshop. For the Arctic 2030 workshop, our fellows are here to help us as note takers, but also to participate in the breakout groups and provide support for the partners of the workshop. In school, there's certain methods that we learn, and that's way different from how problems are actually solved in the real, in the real world. I'd like to go into research and development eventually after I graduate. And so, getting to know the current state of science within the Arctic or uh, anywhere is pretty interesting to me. I really like the fact that I've got a chance to impact the future, whether it's trade routes or routes for security or what have you. I'm excited about this project for a bunch of different reasons. The Arctic is a, is a quickly changing environment and there's not a whole lot of monitoring that's going on to see how this change is occurring and what the effects of this change are. And the questions that can be asked are, are pretty much limitless, but there isn't a great technology that is available today to be able to assess these changing conditions very quickly. All of these scientists need to know what the seafloor looks like but none of them can get the imagery. We try with satellites, um, we have tried with boats, we've tried with planes, but it costs a lot. So the idea was how do we make this relatively inexpensive, relatively easy, and get the data that the scientists need. And so I said, let's build some autonomous underwater vehicles. Because when you have oil spills, which we do have a lot of oil here in the state of Alaska, when you have oil spills, you have to know how the sea ice is moving to know which direction the oil is going to go, how fast it's going to move, and that helps out a lot of folks from that perspective. Also, in general, when you have people that might be get trapped in the sea ice during the winter, knowing how the sea ice is moving will help Coast Guard be able to get to those people that are in need of help. Operations. So I'm working on a coastal erosion model, and it's the, the model will pre, is to predict what coastlines will look like in the future. Um, there's erosional beaches, transitional beaches, and depositional beaches, and by modeling those, you can predict where what the coastline will look like in the future and where the sediment that's eroding will go to. Certain pathogens that are climate dependent could be moving up here and so what do we have in place to prepare for it but also what do we have in place to even know if it's happening um, so I'm proposing this idea of um, infectious disease surveillance in the Arctic. Almost on the, the front edge of it because you're seeing things where there's space, where there's gaps. These are things that need to be addressed and you can tell by doing this research that they are going to be addressed because they're so significant. Because living in Alaska, we can see the changes that are happening and how fast they're happening. So you just know that they're going to get addressed here in the future.